let's be Bonnie and Clyde. Hmm. So that? Yeah. I was like, okay. And you know, I could hear my grandpa just yelling, you know, them fighting, and then I started getting the rush. I started just, just beating her head with it. It was, it was kind of creepy because she was like scared uh -huh. to belly. How did you finally get control of your grandmother? Because in the past, she's been able, she's eventually been able to handle you, right? She's been able to get the upper hand. What was different this time? I've always been in control. Quiet suburban landscape of Georgia. A sinister plot was brewing, a plot that would shock the community to its core. Just as spring was beginning to bloom in May of 2017, the tranquility of this quaint neighborhood was shattered. The unthinkable had occurred. Wendy and Randall Biora, a loving pair of grandparents, were found murdered in the very home they had filled with memories and love. The culprits, their own flesh and blood, their 17-year-old granddaughter, Cassandra Biorhe, and her 19-year-old boyfriend, Johnny Ryder. The details of the crime were as shocking as the crime itself. Not only did these teenagers brutally end the lives of their elders, but they also reveled in the aftermath. Yes, you heard it right. In the very house where they committed this horrifying act, they through a party, a celebration in the wake of such a chilling crime. Imagine the audacity, the cold-bloodedness of it all. The thought is enough to send shivers down anyone's spine. The crime scene told a tale of ruthlessness and brutality. The traces of the murder were everywhere. The room where the bodies lay decaying was sealed off, a horrifying secret hidden behind its closed doors. The house, once a symbol of familial warmth, was now a chilling monument to a gruesome crime. The young perpetrators didn't stop at murder. They reveled in their act, basking in the horror they had unleashed. Ordering food, hosting parties, they carried on as though life was normal, as though they hadn't just committed an unspeakable act of violence. As the news of this shocking crime spread, the community was left reeling, struggling to comprehend how such a heinous act could occur in their midst. How could two teenagers who should have been worrying about school and friends be capable of such a dark, twisted act? And what led them down this horrifying path? As we delve deeper into this chilling tale, we will attempt to unravel the mystery that is the case of Cassandra Bjor and Johnny Ryder. As the investigation progressed, the true brutality of the crime became apparent. The seeds of this heinous act were sown in the minds of two teenagers, Cassandra Bjor and Johnny Ryder. Their discontent was not born out of teenage rebellion, but a sinister plot that would shock the community and leave a family shattered. Cassandra, just 17, and Johnny, only 19, found their lives under the strict rules of Cassandra's grandparents, Wendy and Randall Biora, oppressive. The young couple hatched a plan, a plan that would have devastating consequences. In the quiet of one fateful night in May 2017, the unsuspecting grandparents fell victim to their granddaughter and her boyfriend. The couple didn't just murder Wendy and Randall, they beat them, stabbed them, and left their bodies to decay. The room was sealed, hiding the gruesome secret while life outside continued. But the terror didn't stop there. The teenagers, in a chilling display of audacity, threw a party at the very crime scene. They smoked weed, ordered food, and reveled in their macabre victory, all while the bodies of Wendy and Randall lay decaying in the next room. However, the depth of their depravity didn't end with this double murder. The investigation revealed a more sinister plot. The couple had not only planned the murder of Cassandra's grandparents, but they had also targeted other family members. Cassandra's mother and Johnny's family were next on their list. A crime of this magnitude was not committed on a whim, but was a cold, calculated act of violence. As detectives delved deeper into the case, a chilling picture began to emerge. The investigation was far from straightforward. It was a jigsaw puzzle, each piece more gruesome than the last. The detectives tirelessly pieced together the evidence meticulously combing through the crime scene that was once a place of love and family. The evidence led them to Cassandra Biora and her boyfriend, Johnny Ryder. Both teenagers, they were alarmingly unfazed by the severity of their actions. In fact, the reality of their crime had seemingly been a backdrop to their twisted version of teenage rebellion. One of the most horrifying details revealed during the investigation was the casualness with which the teenagers treated the crime scene. The room where the bodies of the grandparents lay decaying for a week was sealed off, not out of guilt or remorse, but to allow their lives to proceed as usual. In a macabre twist of normalcy, they continued to host parties, ordering food and indulging in their hedonistic pursuits, all while the bodies of their victims were just a room away. The detectives, 
seasoned in their work, were taken aback by the chilling disregard for life displayed by the teenagers. But their professionalism prevailed, and they worked diligently to ensure that the perpetrators were apprehended and held accountable for their heinous acts. The process of the investigation was a journey into the darkest corners of human behavior. It was a stark reminder of the potential for evil that lurks beneath the surface of seemingly ordinary lives. The detectives were faced with the grim task of unraveling the truth, a truth so horrifying that it would leave an indelible mark on their careers and lives. The shocking revelations from the investigation left a lasting impact on those involved, forever changing the quiet suburban community. The trial that followed was one for the history books, leaving a mark on the judicial system. The courtroom held its breath as Cassandra Bjorhe and Johnny Ryder stood before the judge, their faces void of emotion. It was an eerie silence that hung in the room, a silence that carried the weight of the heinous crime they committed. The two teenagers pleaded guilty to the gruesome murder of Wendy and Randall Bjorge. The confession came as a shock to many, but it was the lack of remorse that truly sent shivers down the spine. Johnny Ryder apologized and asked for forgiveness, a plea that fell on deaf ears. Cassandra, on the other hand, remained silent, offering no words of regret or explanation. The sentencing was as chilling as the crime itself. Judge Deborah Turner, a seasoned veteran of the bench, described it as one of the worst cases she had ever presided over. She sentenced the young couple to two life sentences with the possibility of parole in 60 years. An additional 21 years were to be served concurrently, ensuring that the crime's severity was mirrored in the punishment. The verdict wasn't just a reflection of the law's power, but also a sobering reminder of the darkness that can lurk in the hearts of even the youngest among us. It was a statement that such unspeakable acts of violence would not be tolerated, a message that resonated beyond the courtroom walls. As the gavel fell, the reality of their actions set in. They were no longer the rebellious teenagers who thought they could outsmart the world. They were now convicts, destined to spend the majority of their lives behind bars. The freedom they so desperately craved was now a distant dream, replaced by the harsh reality of their actions. The severity of the sentence reflected the horrific nature of the crime, providing a small measure of justice for the victim's family. But even as the courtroom doors closed behind Cassandra and Johnny, the echoes of their crime continued to reverberate, a chilling reminder of the tragedy that unfolded in a quiet Georgia neighborhood. In the wake of such a horrific crime, a community struggles to heal. The brutal murder of Wendy and Randall Bure left a gaping wound, not only in the hearts of their immediate family, but also in the broader community of Gwinnett County, Georgia. Their sudden and brutal demise at the hands of their own granddaughter, Cassandra Bjorhe, and her boyfriend, Johnny Ryder, left many reeling in shock and disbelief. The loss of Wendy and Randall rippled through their family like a stone thrown into a still pond. Their relatives grappled with a double-edged sword of grief, the pain of losing their beloved family members, and the horror of the circumstances surrounding their deaths. The trauma of this tragic event was ongoing a haunting specter that refused to fade even as time began to march on. The shockwaves of this chilling crime reached far beyond the immediate family, shaking the community to its core. Neighbors, friends, and acquaintances found themselves questioning how such an unthinkable act could occur in their midst. The once friendly and welcoming neighborhood was now marred by the gruesome actions of two of its young residents. Trust was shattered, replaced with fear and suspicion. In the aftermath of the crime, the community was forced to confront the grim reality of what had occurred. They were left to grapple with the knowledge that such darkness had invaded their peaceful lives. The sense of safety and security once taken for granted was now lost, replaced with the chilling reminder of the horrific crime. There is no easy path towards healing after such a traumatic event. The victim's family members and the community continue to bear the weight of the pain, the grief and the shock. It's a long and arduous journey, but one they must undertake in order to find some semblance of normalcy amidst the chaos. This shocking crime serves as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk in the most unexpected places, forever casting a shadow over a once peaceful community.